This is the Physical Activity Researcher Podcast, a podcast for researchers of sedentary behavior, physical activity, and sports. Join for a relaxed dialogue about research design, practicalities, and, well, anything related to research. Learn from your fellow researchers useful and relevant information that does not fit into formal content and limited space of scientific publications. And here is your host, researcher and entrepreneur, Ali Tikkanen. Welcome, everyone, to this special episode of Physical Activity Researcher. This episode is about physical activity during coronavirus pandemic and during possible self-quarantine. This is an important topic, as now millions of people are facing so-called social distancing measures and large number also self-quarantine. People are asked to self-quarantine for several reasons. For example, when they are arriving from infected areas, having symptoms of coronavirus, or if they are from the same family of a person who has symptoms. Also in many countries, people in risk groups, being over 70 years, or having a chronic health condition, have been asked to self-quarantine themselves to protect not to get the virus. Normally, we have as a guest a researcher who is an expert on a specific field and knows the things inside out. This time we wanted to make an exception to our format to get this episode published as fast as possible. So even though I am by no means an expert in COVID-19, infectious diseases or pandemics, I will present here the guidelines for physical activity related to coronavirus and and this current situation in the world. Guidelines I'm presenting here are based on the American College of Sports Medicine recommendations that were published in their website on 17th of March 2020. You can check the exact recommendations at exerciseismedicine.com And as we are learning new information about the virus all the time, please know that these recommendations might change. And as I'm not a medical practitioner, these recommendations do not constitute an official medical advice. Furthermore, please know that different countries are in different stages of the pandemic. And I try to present here a more generic guidelines which need possibly be modified on the geographical stage of the pandemic. So let's move to the actual topic of the episode. The current coronavirus pandemic will create challenges to maintain a physically active lifestyle. We know now that COVID-19 is spread by droplet transmissions. For example, someone sneezing or coughing into the air or onto a surface, and then the virus enter a new host through the mouth, nose, or eyes. And what is understood about the transmission of the virus, it is recommended to avoid gatherings of people and maintain a social distance of two meters or more between people. And two meters is about six feet. And when we combine that, with recommendations related to personal hygiene, it may create concerns about exercising in gyms and other sport and exercise facilities, where possibly hundreds of people are in and out on a daily basis. So those at greatest risk for severe complications of COVID-19 are the elderly or the ones with chronic diseases. So especially those individuals should avoid gyms altogether and exercise at home or in their neighborhood. Both for young and old, regular physical activity remains an important strategy for staying healthy. Compared to being sedentary, moderate intensity physical activity is associated with better immune function. Also, it is important to note that regular physical activity is associated with lower levels of anxiety and perceived stress. 
This is important now, as probably many of us feel this situation stressing, as almost every day we are introduced with new limitations that are affecting our daily life and social relationships. So remember to perform physical activity not only for health, but also to decrease anxiety and stress in these fast-changing times that we are living now. And as many people have now started or being forced to start full-time distance work, it is probably advisable to try to do at least some of the physical activity in the outdoors. And if we look at the recommendations, for example, the physical activity guidelines for Americans recommend 150 to 300 minutes per week of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity and two sessions per week of muscle strength training. You can fit in two, five, 10 or 20 minutes, however and wherever you can. And it's important to know Note that every active minute counts, so all activity counts, independent of its duration and intensity. So, as we are in a very new situation in the world, there are quite many questions people have. So let's go through some frequently asked questions and what do the medical practitioner reply to them. So, question one. I'm under quarantine, but not infected. Should I limit my physical activity? So there are no recommendations at this time to limit physical activity if you do not have any symptoms. So to repeat, there are no recommendations to limit if you don't have any symptoms. And the symptoms that should prompt evaluation by a healthcare provider include cough, fever, and shortness of breath. So if you don't have any of those, you don't need to limit your physical activity. Then, will exercise help prevent me from getting the virus? We know that moderate intensity physical activity in general is associated with healthier immune system, which helps to some extent not getting the virus. However, it should be noted that high-intensity, high-volume training may suppress immune function, especially if you are not used to high-intensity, high-volume training. So you should balance this in your workout program. But it needs to be noted that the most important thing is to avoid coming into contact with others who are infected with the virus. So even very good immune system is not good enough if you are in contact with the people. So then third question, what are the precautions I should take? So in general, the most important strategy to prevent infection is to avoid coming into contact with others who are infected with COVID-19. And as anyone can have the virus, it is best to avoid contact with people and follow the social distancing guidelines that are given in your country. So then if a person is under a quarantine and is infected, should they limit physical activity? So people who are known to be infected but are asymptomatic can continue moderate intensity physical activity but need to use symptoms as a guide. So even if person is infected but is not having any symptoms, they can continue moderate intensity physical activity. But very importantly, they should take care to maintain the guarantee to prevent virus transmission to others and this is very important point. And if they develop fever, cough, or shortness of breath, they should discontinue physical activities and reach out to a healthcare provider. And then what if I start to experience symptoms? 
those people experiencing symptoms should follow the local recommendations given by healthcare experts. So in every country, check your local recommendations from, from the government. So if we then look at how to actually perform the physical activity without risking your own or health of others. So naturally, home is a good place to avoid getting the infection or infecting others. But most homes are not the best places for exercising. So clearly some creativity needs to be used to, to be able to maintain an exercise routine at home. And if we first look for the muscle strengthening activities, so you can look ways to do simple muscle strengthening exercises around your house, such as squats or sit to stand movements. And it's good to do these from a sturdy chair. You can do push ups against the wall, the kitchen counter or the floor. So these are changing how hard it is to do the push ups and a little bit the direction of the of the pull. You can do different lunges or single steps ups, for example, on the stairs. Other option could be that you can download a strength workout app to your smartphone. And many of them have exercises that demand no equipment. So it's actually possible to do. And those have a lot of different ideas how to train different muscles and, and might be also motivating that you can keep up the routine for the period needed. Also, you can consider performing yoga. It is also possible that it reduces anxiety, so I, it might fit well for these situations. And then if we look at the aerobic activities, what you could do at home, it's a little bit more challenging than the muscle strengthening activities. If you have some home cardio machines, I think this is definitely the time to start using them. And you could also consider ordering one, but it is good to know that quite many people have difficulty keeping up motivation when using this kind of home cardio machines. You could think about putting on some music, walking briskly around the house or up and down the stairs. For example, 10 to 15 minutes, two or three times per day. If you're into jumping rope, that could be one option. Some people who are more creative could dance to your favorite music, for example. So doing the aerobic exercises at home is a little bit challenging, especially keeping up it on an extended time might be difficult. So I would definitely recommend doing it outside and a simple thing is walk or jog around your neighborhood and that can be done safely you should just avoid crowded spaces and if you stop to talk with someone you should keep at least two meter distance to avoid the infection you can go for a bicycle ride you could be active in a local park and if you are in a park, be sure to wash your hands when you get home. And also from it's a good idea to wash the hands when you come back from a walk or a jog. You can be active in a local park. It has been shown that nature is good for your mental health and may actually enhance your immune function. You should be sure to wash your hands when you get back home. You can also do gardening or lawn work. Spring is around the corner here on the northern hemisphere, so there's probably need for some gardening work. And of course, if you have a family, it's a good time to be active with your family outside. And these were just few examples. And you can find a lot of tips from internet and different smartphone apps. And I think the main point is trying to be creative and find a routine that you can stick with. I will be recording a podcast episode with Professor Stuart Biddle, who is an expert of exercise psychology. And we are going to discuss about the implications of this pandemic and all its restrictions. 
to mental health and how to avoid mental health problems in these challenging times. So if you're interested about that theme, follow this podcast on your podcast application and you will get the notification when the episode has been published. And it is actually second time that Professor Biddle is as a guest in this podcast. In our earlier episode, he was providing excellent insights related to behavior change and psychology of sedentary behavior and physical activity. And those things are important now as many of us are in a new situation in which we need to create new habits related to our daily life, including physical activity and exercise habits. And it's good to remember that change is always also a possibility. These special times might be a good time to create new routines. And before finishing this short special episode, I would like to say that remember that these social distancing measures might feel like overreacting but are absolutely crucial keeping the risk groups safe let's stay responsible let's stay safe this podcast is sponsored by fibian get scientific validation and learn more about fibian at fibian.com research the physical activity researcher podcast has created an activity tracker purchase guide for researchers Get your free copy from the link in the podcast description. Thank you for listening to the Physical Activity Researcher Podcast.